Hi, this is Jurgen Rasmussen. Welcome to the Provocative Hypnosis Vlog. I want to talk a little bit about personal responsibility. I recently had a client, a, a mother who had a teenage son, who was extremely frustrated and asked me, he, he's, he's, my 18-year-old son is bright, he's smart, he, he, he knows consequences of his actions, but he just acts so recklessly. It's as if he can't take personal responsibility in a basic way. Why are teenagers and young people so often like that? The, the, the consistent, uh, unprotected sex, not really studying at school, even though they may say they want to get into a good college or university, or the drunken driving, or whatever they're, they're engaged in. Now, th there's a difference to be made between having a capacity and not caring to use it, uh, essentially just choosing not to be responsible, or lacking the capacity. And for a lot of people, they actually lack the capacity to be responsible uh, in, in a quite fundamental way. So one question that this particular client did not ask, and which most people probably haven't asked, is what are the structural capacities needed to take personal responsibility in a fundamental way? What, what meaning making, what, what capacities do you need to have to be able to do so. If we look at this from a developmental psychology angle, young people and even adults who are not able to take responsibility in, in, in the way we kind of expect people to do, usually are subject to their enduring needs, perceived needs, agendas, and enduring interests. They're, they're fused with those enduring interests and perceived needs. They're, they're essentially one with them. And they can take multiple perspectives, but just one at a time. And this is why even though they may know about future consequences, it's often not enough to really move them or shape their behavior. The people who are able to act responsibly are able to hold two perspectives simultaneously at the same time. So you need to be able to be able to hold a possible future in such a way that it's part of your present experience, meaning to, to be able to experience what I want now and what I want in the future simultaneously at the same time. If a person can't do that, it's really hard for the person to really act in a way where they're responsible in the conventional sense. So if you see clients for a living, the question then becomes, do you have a way to help said client to not just be able to take multiple perspectives one at a time, but to actually develop the capacity to experience two perspectives simultaneously, to be able to experience what I want now and what I want in the future as one integrated experience in present time. Do, do you have a way to help people uh, achieve that or, or, or to make that developmental shift? If you do, you can help clients transform their experience, meaning you can help them change the very, the very way they understand themselves and their world instead of just kind of giving them new tools or new skills or information that they can make sense of given how they currently make sense out of experience. 
there are many different levels of personal uh, responsibility. So some useful questions to ask is, you know, what does this person take responsibility for? And what does this person not take responsibility for? What do they know that they can take responsibility for and not take responsibility for simultaneously? What is it that they don't know that they can take responsibility for that they obviously don't take responsibility for? So I'll, I'll give you another example. I, I just worked with a guy who for the last few weeks ha has brought himself into this worry loop where, where it's you know restricted his sleep he's been panicky he's been so afraid of making mistakes uh, and 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 being criticized and when i really explored this with him he he said i i guess i just really dislike disappointing someone now, he, he said, you know, I, I know I shouldn't care that much about what other people think, but it's really hard not to. Now, you might ask, why was it hard not to? Because he, his very sense of self was made up by his relationships, meaning his perceptions of how significant others or work colleagues experienced him was a large part of how he experienced himself. So if, if he had the perception that someone else was disappointed in him, you know, a, a trusted work colleague or a family member, that perception of someone else being disappointed in him became a large part of his experience of himself. As a result of that sort of interpersonal self, um, if, if, if you, for example, ask the question, why are some people constantly falling for this victimhood narrative where they hold other people directly responsible for how they feel? Well, that's why, because their perception of themselves is so dependent upon how they think other people perceive them then largely becomes a basis for how they perceive themselves. They don't really have a, a separate distinct self apart from that that can have a relationship. Right? So as a result of that, they have a tendency to be simultaneously under-responsible. This is where the, the victimhood mindset, as in you make me feel, comes in. And they're paradoxically simultaneously over-responsible in that they hold themselves accountable directly for how other people feel. So since if I operate that way, and, and you're some significant other, if I perceive you to be disappointed in me, that largely influences how I experience myself, I'm gonna project that onto you as well, that if I am disappointed in you and I express it, that that's likely going to largely influence your experience of yourself. So now I easily become conflict avoidant or a people pleaser. So, so I, I kind of directly take responsibility then for, for how you feel. So in, in this instance, um, Taking responsibility for your own feelings, having good boundaries in terms of what I'm responsible for and you're, what you're responsible for, my inner experience and your inner experience, to be able to do that requires the capacity to bring a distinct sense of self to the interaction that's not made up by the relationship, but which can actually have relationships. So 
and and helping someone do that helping someone to change their their structural capacities so to speak is so essential for good change work and one reason I'm mentioning this is because if, if you know, if, if you have a good developmental psychology lens, you can tailor make the work you do in such a way that it, it can either kind of co consolidate the, the stage of development that someone's operating from, or you can help someone to upgrade their meaning making system so that it becomes more more complex uh, and more functional given the the um, existential demands of, of whatever situation or life circumstance that they're in i'm doing a seminar if you're watching this in 2022 i'm doing a seminar called identity level change which is about exactly this it, it, it's about how various meaning-making stages, various so-called structural capacities, strongly influence what we can take responsibility for, what we can take perspective on, our relationships towards authority, how we view conflict, how we receive feedback, how we send feedback, it's largely based up on Robert Keegan's um, orders of consciousness model. Uh, also a little bit there from Susan Kukreuter's ego development uh, model. And also a little bit there from the late work of Claire Graves. I'm not claiming to teach these models per se. I'm teaching how I use a blend of them in client work. So if you're curious about this, please go to provocativehypnosis.com, click the seminar page, and you will see a link to a workshop called Identity Level Change. It's uh, the weekend of September 24th and 25th, 2022, hosted by Ayether and Alchemy.net. So I really hope to see you there. Thanks for listening.